I hope everybody here tonight hears or feels something that lifts your soul, because that's how we feel in doing our work. Uh, there's never a bad day. I, I know I come to the office walking by the 9-11 memorial, and no matter how bad the day before was, no matter how much I'm worried about the day ahead, it won't be as bad as that day. And everything, every day, we do helps somebody get an education, somebody get rescued, somebody to have their art preserved for another time. In our, our generation, Vietnam was not a country, it was a war. And I had the privilege of taking my daughter and grandson this August back to Vietnam. Uh, he wanted to see the war, mainly the tunnels in Cú Chi. He wanted to explore the tunnels. That lasted 30 seconds until he found the first bat <laughs> hanging from the wall of the cave, and you never saw anybody exit <laughs> of considerable size so quickly as our grandson, aging, our grandson Jack. Uh, our daughter wanted to see where we had lived. Uh, and we realized that you could see the physical structures, but Vietnam had become a country. It was no longer a war. Most of the people in Vietnam today were not alive when the war happened, much less when the war appeared to end. Uh, as I thought about the impact on him seeing this place is a country, uh, he said, Bubba, do you think we met any communists? I don't think we did. 10 days, two weeks, met a lot of people. But it was transformed. It doesn't happen in the space of one presidential administration, and it doesn't happen over a short period of time. But as Dr. King said, the arc of history does eventually bend toward freedom and justice. And that's global. That's not just an American parable. Uh, so we got to see Vietnam transformed the way I never thought we would. Now, a lot of people do ask me these days, what can I do? For us at II, it's really easy. My answer is simple, come to work. Because by coming to work, we rescue scholars, we help artists and save their work, we widen opportunities, especially for education for women that have been denied it, uh, and have been denied it for generations for so many reasons, and yet every one we can find a scholarship for, we save that life, we save their future, uh, and we work in a space that is, has been pretty much neglected. Uh, you'll hear tonight about our scholarship for refugees. We have that in part because of the generosity of the board, and in part because we all realize that of all the scholarships we administer, uh, none of them are for refugees. And, and so we decided, uh, with many of the initiatives you hear about tonight, to make permanent signature initiatives to address the gaps in the world of international education exchange. Uh, we did our first rescue, uh, I'm almost through with the history lesson, in 1920. And we've been doing it ever since. There was a hope that as we entered the 21st century, uh, we wouldn't need to do so much of it. That is completely unfounded. We're busier than ever, busier and in more demand than any period in our history. And today, business is booming with everything you read about in the headlines. And that's not really a good thing to say. But that's what we're trying to do with all of the programs you will hear about tonight. With education and exchanges, there's always a way to make the world we share a less dangerous place. There's no bad day 
when you're working at IIE. There's no bad day when you're helping people who work at IIE. And, and we have to believe that the work we can do together is something we can do. It's a privilege to serve all of the people you hear about tonight. It's a privilege to come to work every day and it's a real privilege to see so many people here so uplifted already. So God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us.